Okay, welcome back folks to a surprise end game because after I finished the extended, I took a little breather and I figured what the heck, let's just actually finish this game out and see where it ends up. So I played through a few more rounds and I am just, it's my turn. I am just now about to play the architect which will trigger the game end. Um, what's happened in between now and the extended, I just continued to try and spread as far and fast as I could, trying to get my foot into every region for the, you know, the province bonus at the end of the game. Jen, she ended up getting a few more cards and then actually spent quite a bit of time just trying to get all her colonists onto the board so that she could benefit from, um, was it Mars, I think? Yeah, Mars. She really wanted to benefit from that. So it actually took a fair bit of resources and slowed her down. And so she's left with a little bit. She's got a lot of money that she hasn't spent, a little bit of resources. I'm, and I've set this up for my final turn wherein I'm going to build my final three houses and trigger the end of the game. And that situation, I think, I have a rough feeling that right now, I, the green player, am doing better than Jen because I just made some really sloppy moves for her. It's why she's got so much money. There were definitely smarter moves I could have made, but I was just playing fast and loose. But anyway, you guys will get to see what an in-game looks like. So, it's my turn. I'm going to play Architect. And like always, I move my colonists. Now, I've got three colonists on the board, so that means I can spend three movement now, and I'm going to use all of them. Let's see, how do I figure that out? All right, so this guy is going to go one, and this boat is going to go one, two. So that's my three movements. So those two guys have moved into those positions. And now I can build as many cities as I can afford. As you can see, I can afford quite a bit. So this guy moved over here so I could build into this... Um, food producing city. This and that guy moved over there so that I could build into this brick city. Um, I was really, I don't need to, but what the heck? Well, I mean, I've got an extra food. It was really about moving over here so I could build into this tool city so that I could get a foothold into Lusania. But then I happened to have some extra food, so I figured, what the heck? I might as well build there too. Um, right, so those are the three I'm building, and that means it's $1 to build in a brick town, $2 to build in a food town, and $3 to build in a tool town. All right, so there's all my cash. And boom, boom, boom. And my last three houses, one, two, three. Oh, that's why I did, yeah, because I needed to get my third house out. You know, this brick doesn't really necessarily benefit me that much. I don't have the mason. I don't get, but, and I already had a foothold in Sicilia, but I'm just building there because for one food, I could trigger the game in and I think I'm sitting pretty. And now what happens is when you trigger the game in, whoever did it, either by building their final house or buying the last card, you can see there are four more. This time we ended based on houses, not on um, personalities. Whoever finishes gets to, whoever purchases the last personality or builds his 15th, gets this card, which is worth seven points. All other players get a turn. So I don't get any more turns, but everybody else, regardless of where we were in round order, not that rounds really exist in this game, but everybody else will get to go. So anyway, I got the Concordia card. Yay! Jen gets one more turn now. And let's see. And now she wasn't expecting it to end quite so quick. She actually had a couple more things she wanted to do, but say la vie. So she is also going to play an architect, although she could do diplomat and copy my architect if she wanted, but what the heck, she had her own. So she's gonna do the same basic thing, but she's got all colonists out. So she can spend up to six movement points now. And I wasn't planning on doing this right yet. But see, I know she wanted to move over here because she gets bonus points both for farms and for brick. So she wanted to get both of these. So that's gonna be one, two, three, four. And right, so she's gonna build up there, which means she's gonna need a food to build up there and she's gonna need a brick and a food to build up there. And then she has enough left over to, she doesn't, she has a brick and a food. So she could, if she can reach someplace else, she could build either in a, um, another food place, which is ideal, or another brick laying place. Cause she, she gets bonus points for food and brick laying places. Cause she's got the Mason, which is three extra points for every, and what's her farmer? It's in here somewhere. Um, oh, she gets Vintner, but she's not going to build a wine place. She doesn't have time for that. Where's her farmer card? Uh, so many cards. Oh, she already played her farmer card. Oh, yes, that's right. She already has. So either way, if she can build... Right, so she'll get three points if she builds one more farm or 
one more brick. So ideally she should do a brick then because this is worth more money at the end of the game. So let's see. Now she, well, she was here, so that was one, two, three, four. She has two more moves she could spend to try to get to a farmhouse or a brick laying place. Let's see. Now she could go this guy one, two, and then she could build here, but she'd have to pay a premium to build, where I, so I just kind of blocked her. What are the free places? She can't, or she could build a tool place, although that doesn't benefit her as much. And she can't get there anyway because the boats can't get it. This guy's already moved. This guy's way too far away, so she can't get to that one. She'd like to get to the brick, but she can't get to that one because this guy's already, so this guy can move here, and it's pretty much, you know, the same end result. Um, you know, a brick and a food, but, um, so that guy can't move anymore after, you know, if, if he's going to let her build those two. This boat, everything along the river has been taken. So I don't think there's anybody to do. I think she is going to spend five, six, and she's going to build where I've already built, which means she'll have to pay a premium, but she'll get a few more points out of it. Okay. So she spent her six movement points, and now she's going to build up here. That costs one dollar to build in a brick town. And she's going to build up here, and building a food town costs $2. And she's got plenty of money, so money's not the issue. And then she's going to come over here, and it takes another food, her last food, and um, $1 to build into a brick town. But however, since I'm already here, she has to pay double the money. Now that's not that big a deal. Double one is two, so that one costs her two bucks instead of one to build in. So it wasn't too terribly bad, and the important thing is, so she had to pay an extra buck to get in here, but she'll score more points, three extra points, and that's it. So that was her final turn. The game is now over, and so now we can do final scoring. Forgive me, this is gonna be kind of sloppy, but let's get a go. So we walk through it turn by, first we, we do, we score all the gods in this order. So first, the Vestas. For every 10 bucks, we get a point. And so the first thing we do is we sell all our excess stuff at the market rate. I have two cloth left over, so that's 14 bucks I get. All right, and so then I've got, so that's 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, 16. So I didn't quite make 20, so that's one point I get from Vesta. And then I don't really care about the rest of my money. And now, and by the way, there's only, um, there are no multiple Vesta cards to buy, so no matter, you can't get additional Vesta cards to get more off of money. So, how much has Jen got left over? She had one brick and one tool left over, so that is eight bucks she sells those for. Uh, five, six, seven, eight, and let's see what her total is. It's a bit more than me. So that's um, 10, 20, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. She had 31, so that means three points. One, two, three. Vesta is scored. Now we move on to Jupiter. And so let's do me first. Now, first of all, I have to find out how many Jupiter cards did I get over the course of the game. Totally lost track, but of course if I were playing more carefully that is an important consideration You know the more Jupiter cards you have the more you want to focus on the Jupiter scoring action. So let's see. What did I get? Um, so many cards. Oh my goodness So I have three Jupiter cards So I multiply three times one times the number of non-brick cities I've got yikes. Let's figure this out. All right, so non-brick cities one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's ten, but let's recount again. Helps uh, somebody help me. In. It's funny, actually, originally I was going to go for a lot more brick cities, but then Jen got the mason, so I gave up on that. Um, so I, I mostly have non brick cities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Ah! All right. Okay. Turn them on their sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, it is ten. I count correctly. So I had ten. Ten times one times three is thirty points. So I'm at thirty-one. Once we've done Jupiter. Now I've got to check out Jen's cards as well. How many Jupiters does she have? And again, of course, also, this would be a lot easier if uh, I had another hand. Let's see, does she only get two Jupiter cards? Wow, that's what it looks like. But you know what? I mean, it's not surprising. She never really tried very hard to get into a lot of cities. 
Yep, she only has two Jupiter cards. So she multiplies two times one times the number of unique cities she's got. So this is brick, brick, brick. One, two, three, three, only three. Three times two times one is six points. So she's up to nine. She did not invest heavily in Jupiter like I did. Moving on to Saturn. That's the number of provinces you're in. So let's figure out how many Saturn cards I've got. These are all my Jupiter cards. Oh, let's give, my, give me my seven points right now while I'm at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven for the Concordia card. Now my Saturns. One. Ah. Two. Three. I have three Saturn cards. I started with two, I got one more. So three times one times the number of unique provinces. And if I got this right, I think I'm in every single province. So let's let's check it. Alrighty. Um, in this, in Transpandia, I'm in Transpandia. In Liberia, I'm in Liberia. In Emilia, I'm in Avilia. In Venetia, I'm in Venetia. In the purple one, Umbria, I'm in Umbria. And, uh, oh no! I never got into, so crap. I didn't ever get into Ed, 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 Ed or whatever. So that's one I didn't get into. Let's see, I got in here, 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 I got in here. So I got into 11 of the 12. So it's 11 times three times one is 33 more points. So um, 68, 71, is that right? 38, yep, alrighty. So that was it for provinces. That was, a, that was my big one. Let's see now, and again, Jen did not really pursue much in the way of spreading throughout the world, so let's see how she did. She tried to push towards it a little bit at the end of the game. All right, so we already counted her Jupiters. We've already counted her Vesta. All right, here's her Marses and her Minervas and her Mercuriuses. Right, so she only got, oh, she got three. So let's see how many regions she got into. All right. Let's just look for her. Okay, so she's in Sicily. Yeah, she got that at the end. So Sicily, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait, wait, no, I did get an Etria. I did get an Etria. I got, okay, so I got three more points. Sorry. One, two, three. I'm blind. I thought that was, I saw the blue of the cloth and I read that as blue when it's in fact it's green. All right, let's start over with Jen again. And again, I, I'm sure I'm making mistakes here, but you guys will forgive me. All right, so Jen's in Sicily. So let's do that flipping thing again. That worked out pretty nice. Let's flip so I can keep track of where I have and have it. All right, so we're counting Jen's stuff. She's in Sicily. That's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven. So she was in seven of the provinces, times three times one, she made 21 points. So 21 plus nine is at 30 points. So that was Saturn. Now, on to the brown, production. I, I think I only have one of these, is that correct? Because Jen got the other one. No, I got two. So I guess Jen had two and I had two. All right, so and I've already done my Vestas. All right. So I have two, two times the number of things I produce. So it's two points per thing I produce and I got two cards. So that's two times two times the number of things I produce. I think I produce everything. I produce bricks and cloth and wine and food. And what's the other thing? Tools and tools. So I, I produce one of everything. So um, it's five times two is 10 times two is 20 points. 74. Uh, 84, 94. Now let's see how Jen did. She got two of these as well. All right. And so what did she produce? I honestly don't know. I was paying less attention to her. She gets brick. Those are all bricks. Food. That's two things. Wow. Only two things? Really? She, uh, bricks. Brick food. Food, food. Brick, brick. Brick, only two things, two things, times two is four, times three is only 12 points, ikes. 30, 42, all right. Now, on to Mars. I, do I have any Mars cards? I have one Mars card. Okay, um, all right, so we've done that. 
Mars. I have one Mars card. Mars is the number of colonists. I have three colonists times two, it's two per colonist, so that's six, times one, I get six points for Mars. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this was a thing that Jen focused on quite a bit more. She has three of the four Mars cards that are in the game. Um, right? So, three times two is six times, she got all six guys out, six times six is 36, so 42, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. That was a nice comeback for her. And now we move on to our Minerva cards, the last one, these are specialists. I get five points for every cloth house I'm in, and I'm in a few. One, two, I think that's it, so I get 10 points. So I'm at 110. And Jen, she got um, uh, several more Minerva cards. I don't know how well it worked out for. She gets three points for every brick she's in, um, three points for every food she's in, and four points for every wine she's in, and she never built a single wine. So this one is nothing. She didn't get into any wine zone. So this was a waste for her to buy it, very bad. But, so she gets three points per why for, for for food and three points for a brick. So, and that's basically all she's got. Remember, she only built in um, bricks and food. So all of her all of her houses count three. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, seven times three is 21. So 78, 88, 98, one. And that's it. The end of the game, I won 110 to 99. There you go. Um, if Jen had just gotten into one, well, if she'd gotten into like one wine house, one, two, three, four, she just uh, would have been close. Well, still, at, at that big a number, not too bad, but as I predicted, I won. You know, Jen focused, I think, uh, like I said, when I was trying to make a run to get her all those colonists, which did very well for her, did very well, but I was a bit sloppy, I, I was short-sighted, I didn't really think through all the permutations to do it as efficiently I could. And she paid the price, I came out ahead, because I just did a big land rush, yeah, she had to pay, no, uh, she would have gotten nods, uh, okay. And there you go. That, and although I'm sure I missed a couple things, I'm sure you guys will point out where I missed, but still, it gives you an idea of how the game built up, how the final scoring worked on Concordia. There you go, folks. Now, you can go to final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.